Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. God has given us unlimited treasures in his word. Every time we open it, we can discover a new treasure or admire an old one. What will we find today? Let's dig in. Here's Carla Early with Treasure Hunt in the Word. I remember a children's musical put on by a church I visited once. It was about King Jehoshaphat. I still remember the first song. It said, Fat, fat Jehoshaphat, what a good, good king is he, because fat, fat Jehoshaphat loves the Lord. At the time, I'd never heard of Jehoshaphat, but I loved the name. And I love the idea that Judah had a good king who followed the Lord. In fact, he was a second-generation good king. His father Asa also did what was good and right in the eyes of the Lord his God. He removed altars to idols, destroyed high places, broke idol pillars, and cut down wooden images. He commanded Judah to seek God and observe the law. It's well and good to destroy the bad stuff and make laws against idol worship, but that doesn't change the hearts of people. Even having a good godly leader who did what was right in the eyes of the Lord wouldn't make our country turn around, would it? It would be a great start, but many people would still believe what they wanted to believe and still act the way they wanted to act in many ways. So Asa had the country going in the right direction, and under his leadership, many sought the Lord. His son Jehoshaphat took these reforms one step farther. But first, it says, Jehoshaphat prepared his heart to seek God. When we studied Rehoboam, the Bible says that he ended up doing evil because he did not prepare his heart to seek the Lord. But Jehoshaphat did. He delighted in the ways of the Lord. And though he lived in Jerusalem, he became a traveling evangelist. Second Chronicles 19.4 says, he went out again among the people, from Beersheba to the mountains of Ephraim, and brought them back to the Lord God of their fathers. Beersheba is the southern part of his territory, Judah, but Ephraim is part of the territory of the northern kingdom, Israel. While he was turning the people back to the Lord, he set godly judges over the land in each city. He reminded them, be careful, you're not judging as a representative of man but as a representative of God. The main event in Jehoshaphat's life, which was what the musical I saw was based on, was when three other nations came to fight against Judah. When Jehoshaphat heard they were coming, it says he feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast. He gathered all the leaders to seek the Lord too. And we'll talk about his prayer tomorrow, but the enemy, which outnumbered the Jews something like three to one, were about 25 miles from Jerusalem. Instead of gathering the troops, sending for reinforcements, and meeting with his generals to make a battle plan, Jehoshaphat set himself to seek the Lord. Oh yes, he was afraid, but that Hebrew idiom literally means he set his face to seek the Lord. In other words, he took his eyes off of the huge, terrifying, overwhelming problem, and turn them to the Lord, who's bigger and more powerful. He ends his prayer by saying, Our eyes are on you. Isn't that what we all need to do when overwhelming forces threaten to destroy us? We need to take our eyes off the problem and put them on God. He's the one in control anyway. Jehoshaphat didn't just in that moment set his eyes on God. He'd been doing that all his life, from the time he was young, preparing his heart. Yes, as we all do, he made plenty of stupid mistakes, like marrying his son to Ahab's daughter, joining Ahab in battle, and later allying himself with Ahab's son Ahaziah to make ships to set out on a trading expedition. But like King David, his ancestor. Jehoshaphat was a man after God's own heart. He sought God, not just in this desperate situation, but all his life. His heart was prepared. I want to leave you with the words of one of the songs from the musical. It says, Problems aren't problems when you pray. They become the way God can show his love for you. 
Isn't that a wonderful thought to meditate on today? You can contact us at treasurehuntintheword at gmail.com. We'd love to hear the treasures God has given you through his word. You can listen to other episodes at our website, which you can find in the description below. Thanks for listening, and remember, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also.